you are too high on your intensity. Um, you can also be too low. So we want to know, like if I do 70% for, or even lower if I do, yeah, 70% for fives. Our 70%, that's what we, that's our 100% at 12. So 70% would be much too low for fives, depending. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So the idea is, if we're doing fives, which I like to use fives as an example, because in weightlifting, that's usually the highest rep we're, we're going to get to, for the most part. Even in squats, um, there are people who do eights, tens, whatever. Um, there's merit to that. There's people that disagree with that. But right now, I'm going to stay around fives. Again, if I program five sets of five at 85% or 80%, because I know that if I want to do strength, there's a typical, uh, there's this typical range where people say, okay, we're working 80 to 90% because we're in strength. And we want to acquire 80 to 90% because it's strength. Okay, great. Well, if I do fives and I start at 80% and I go up to 85%, I'm two weeks into training and now I have nowhere to go. Hopefully I'm stronger, so I could probably go up a little bit more, but how many weeks does that last? If we're doing a 12-week macro cycle, we're killing people the second, third, fourth week in, and we still have eight more weeks to go. So we have to use this chart right here, the rep maximum chart, which was formulated, um, it's actually, I took this one from the Essentials of Strength and Conditioning. I, I have my uh, National Strength and Conditioning Association uh, yes. Certified Strength and Conditioning Coach or whatever, certification. Anyways, in the back of that textbook, or they have this rep maximum chart. Now, when the bar is fixated on you, so front squat or the force velocity curve, so like when you watch Clarence snatches, right, that bar changes speed. Like a good amount. At least twice off the hips changes, and then when you it changes speed. So the force velocity curve is literally like, right? We can't base that on a rep max chart. We can't, I can't be like, okay, well, Clarence just hit 160, uh, or he's done 180, so his five rep max is gonna be 87%. Because I don't think he can snatch 87% five times. At least I'd be crazy surprised if he could. Okay, so this is going to work for your back squats, your front squats, and your pulls. Primarily like deadlifting. You can do it on clean pulls. You can do it on push presses, I believe. Um, you can do it on strict press. But the reason why this is so effective is again so we can progress in a, in a slower rate so that we can stay away from maximum. We, wanna, we want to stay away from the maximum weight until we've built the biggest base possible and then we can go there. So what I'm going to do is we're going to build a 5x5 five five here and um, over the course, course of four weeks, you guys are welcome to write it down, but we're going to go through it together. Okay? So first off, if on our best day ever, right, the, the, the music is on, the Thin Lizzy is on, Irish player, that's on. Uh, that's racist. Um, no, uh, so you're jacked up, you're all up on pre-workout, you got the, the, the class yelling at you, the team yelling at you, and you did a five rep maximum. What is the highest percentage you should be? 87%, right? So that would be on our best day, we're hitting 87%. If you smoke that, if you take 87% and absolutely destroy it, we need to adjust your training max. So say that you literally maxed out your back squat and killed it, okay? That's gonna be your five rep maximum. So what we want to do is take a percentage of that, okay, to start. So um, when we take a percentage of that, uh, it ends up working out where 90% for the most part, when you're in these, this smaller range from like I think 7 or 8 or 6 below, when you take 90%, um, you, that's when you're training maximal strength. Anything below that, so relative intensity. So if I take 90% of 87%, I'm now in that window of max strength. If I take 80% of 87%, I'm a little bit too low. And we're working more conditioning, right? We're getting in the, we're, we're moving the barbell too fast. We're not, we're not training maximal strength. So, so does that make sense? Like, 
This is our best. We want to take 90% of our best. But because we have 12 weeks to get that PR, we'll go a little bit lower than 90%. So what we're going to do is we want to do fives, okay? We'll take 85% of 87%. Do we get that? So that's where we're going to start, okay? Does anyone have a calculator handy? I know what it is. What's that? Okay. I know what it is. It's 74%. Yeah. Um, so all you're going to do, 0.87 times 0.85. And you're going to get 74%. So our relative intensity was what? No. 85. And we came out with our actual intensity of 74. So actual intensity is, our, is like what I would give you, right? So if, if I said, okay, we're going to do sets of three at 74% today. 74% of what? One right One right now. So when you give someone, like, you're going to give an athlete actual intensity. If they understand relative intensity, you can say, all right, we're working at 90% relative today, so we know it's going to be a little bit difficult, or 95% relative. We know it's going to be a little bit difficult, but this is the number that you'll get. So we said we're going to do what reps by what reps? Five, five by five. Okay, so now we know what we're doing. Uh, actually, you want to put that down here. Five by five. Okay. Five by five at 74%. That's week one. We all get that? And we all understand how I got that. Any questions so far? Okay. Again, you could start at 90% here. But why do we start at 85? You can't go up that much higher from 90. Exactly. We, we want more time. We want more space. Sorry, is that just so crystal clear? Um, five by five, top set at seventy-five. Or yep. Or building up to that, what would you do? In um. So that's a good question. Uh, I like. I mean, we can talk about warm-ups for a while. The. I think early on, it's not as important to uh, worry about the volume of your warm-ups beforehand, because again, seventy-four percent is pretty light. Yeah. Um. So you can do a lot of reps beforehand to get loose. I would say just threes until you get there, fives until you get there. Um, you could go barbell, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, and then get going. Okay? But here, like 74%, we should be okay with like, with getting there pretty fast. It's a lightweight. Okay, so we have five by five. Now, moving on from here. Okay? Um, what do we want to do with relative intensity? week by week to progress. Increase. What's that? Increase. Increase it. Where can we go with it? What do we want to do? Right. Well, let's go to let's go to like somewhere in between. I mean again we want to stay away from going too fast. 87, 88. 88%? Let's go up three every time. Okay? So now we're gonna go 88%. Okay? Of what? 87. 87. So all we gotta do is multiply 0.88 times 0.87. Okay. 0.88 times 0.87. 76.5%. Okay. Now here's where things get a little bit different. <clears throat> so the, the, the very basis of periodization. Um, is based is off of one really important concept. It's called it's commonly called like supercompensation, but we know it as like deloading or tapering, something like that. And basically, all you do is you build up muscular fatigue, neuromuscular fatigue, and then you take a step back, and then once you recover, you're stronger than you were before. Probably like the the first concept that we learn in like any sort of biology or cellular biology or anything about the muscle. You break it down, it takes a little bit of time to build back up, and then once it builds back up, it's strong. So what we want to do is we want to overload here, and what we can do is three different types of overload. Does anyone know? Can, can we list off the types of overload? Volume. Reps. Weight. Reps, weight. weight. What else? Speed. Volume. Speed. Ish. We're on that page almost. Rest. Rest. Okay. 
Um, we'll talk a little bit more about reps, but let's let's think about sets and volume. So how do we go up here? I want to stay at fives across this entire thing. So what will we do here? Six by five. Just add a set. Okay. So so we do six by five. Okay. Now here, uh, this is going to be our super compensation. So everybody got that? We went up a set and we went up in relative intensity. Boom, boom. Pretty easy. Okay. So now here is what we call super compensation or the deload week. This is the week where our muscles have to recover so that we can be superhumans the next week. Okay? So all we're going to do here is I'm not even going to look at relative intensity. I'm just going to make sure the actual intensity is lower than week one. And I can make it substantially lower. I don't really care. Again, this is just so we stay fresh. So we can do anything from, I would say, 60 to 70 percent. And why is that? I just said, why 60 to 70 percent? No. It's lower, right? We'll just, stay, we'll just stay lower than week one. We just want it to be the lowest thing by far. Okay, and then to make sure that we're even lower than that, we're just going to go like this because it doesn't quite matter. Okay, to make sure that we don't fatigue ourselves entirely, we'll go four by five here. Okay, so now we're ready to go. This is our test week, this is our performance week. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to bump relative intensity up again to what? 91. And then we're going to multiply it by what again? 87. 0.87 times 0.91. 0.87 times 0.91 equals 79%. We'll go 80%. This is where things get really cool here. Okay? So now we're working at 80%. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to do four sets. Okay? Because I, I, I don't really care, and I'll, I'll tell you why, but I don't really care about volume here. I really want this to be our test week. This is our, our big focus week. So we'll go 4x5 at 80%. Now, for, for beginners, for people who are just starting to squat, a lot of you in here, this, this program will work guaranteed for you if you are squatting like this, or, or front squatting, back squatting, whatever it is. This is going to work. What we can do here is we can optimize this even further. So what I would do instead of four by five is three sets of five at 80. Three by five. And then I would do one AMRAP. And you crossfitters should know what this means. Okay. As many reps as possible, okay? So this is a good question here. At what point, how many reps would I need here to adjust my training max? Nine. What? Nine is right in the Yeah. Right, because he you you picked up that 80% right here. Right? Our eight rep max, our best day, we should only be able to lift 80% eight times, remember? Our best day. But we're superhumans now because we just super compensated. And okay? we just deloaded. We're superhuman, so we should be able to get more than eight reps. That makes sense? So if we do get more than eight, eight reps, say we get 10 reps, okay? Now we need to adjust our training max. So your new rep, one rep max would be, what's the weight? So we can pick a weight here. Let's just say that this person's working off 100 kilo back squat. Okay, I see the end I always use that example. And they're doing 80%, which means how many kilos? 80, 80. Okay. We're gonna do 80. Times one plus how many reps did we decide? Nine. Nine over thirty. Okay. So now our new one rep max is one hundred and four kilos. Any questions on that? None at all. No. You use that for the next four weeks? And use it for the next four weeks. Would you, would you ever actually go and test that one more to see if it's like accurate? There, not really. Because we're still, we're, still, we're still far away. And then the thing is too, the reps are going to get smaller. So 
Um, we're going to start working with threes and, and then twos. And you'll notice, like as it gets closer to your one rep max, that this number will become more and more accurate. I've used this and it's worked tremendously. If you're a little lazy about it, just if someone takes, if you don't do this AMRAP set, um, and they take, actually it works more later on, but if they end up taking whatever it is that's supposed to be 95% relative, and they're going up and down real fast, like odds are you probably have to bump up their, their training next. You don't have to do an AMRAP set. It's more about visibility, how fast we're moving up and down. But that's more, I mean, this is more strength work. When, you know, in weightlifting, we don't just work strength. But it's important to understand this concept. And I'll, I'll, the reason why I'm bringing this up in 5x5, five five, what was the other factor to progress, uh, progressive overload that we missed out on? Rest. Okay? So I had the opportunity to work with Andy Callard, who is the um, British weightlifting coach. Andy is a lifetime natural lifter, um, and at this time there was a lot of people who were um, unnatural, who were on steroids. Um, and what happens, like I said before, if you start lifting at 95% relative, if you start maximal training way outside of competition, what does it become hard to do? Get better than that, right? It's, it becomes hard to supercompensate because you don't have anywhere to go. You're already up so high. So what you want to do is, when we're at 74%, we should be cooking. We should be going fast. Because now we have another factor that we can control. Not just in weight, not just how our CNS feels. It's how fast can we get 5x5 five five done at 74%. All of you guys, when you unrack 74% today, because that's what we're going to do, okay, that's a surprise. <laughs> we're doing 74% for 5x5. Five five. And when you unrack 75%, you're going to feel pretty comfortable, right? Yes? You're going to unrack 75% in the front rack, you'll be like, I know that I can hit this. And the idea is, when you finish your set, yeah, you're breathing hard, your training partner walks up to the bar, he's not going to sit down, open up Instagram, Talk about your day, talk about whatever. He knows too, or she knows too, that they can get up to the bar and go. And if you can get up to the bar and go, and not miss five reps, just go and do it. Right? We're here to train, we're here to build capacity. If this is 12 weeks out, you better be going fast. Okay? If you take three minutes and you max out your five, and you do it five by five, it takes 45 minutes and you're doing it 95% relative or 98% relative, where can you go from there? It makes, right? That's the one reason, like CrossFit, they, they have, uh, there is some merit to it because they're building this massive base. Obviously at some point you need to capitalize on that massive base and actually train strength. But what I've seen with weightlifters, one of the biggest problems is I'll give you a five by five and it'll take you 40 minutes to do it. You'll warm up and it'll take you 40 minutes to do it. So when I was with Andy, Right? This, was, this was awesome. He's like, you're going to train at my gym? He lifted with me. He's 51 years old. Okay? He lifted with me. I wanted to impress him a little bit, so I put on 140. I did a really slow five, set of five. Because like, we were doing five by five. He's like, I knew that he loved it. He's like, nah, mate, let's take off. Let's go down to 120. And let's like kind of build back up. We'll see how you are. So we went down to 120. He goes and does five. And I'm just kind of like, okay. I'm not even standing up, I'm kind of looking down. He, he racks away, he goes, come on then, let's go, come on. And then I'm like, all right, I walk up, I do my 20, or I do my set of five, I rack it, and then he, as soon as I sit down, he goes right up, and he goes. This is five by five, right? We're used to just sitting and chilling, taking our time. We did this five by five in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay, and that's at 74%. So now imagine that we're able to do 80% in 10 minutes, okay? 85%, now we're working at 95%, 98% relative. We're hitting almost our maximum set of five for five sets in 10 minutes. So what happens now if I want you to, to go higher from there and we're working in 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. Just at rest. There's another factor. We're, we're, we're fit now. If you're doing, you know, if you have a big front squat, 
and you do a five by five at 80% in 10 minutes, right? Do you think you're gonna struggle with that clean? There's no way. You're gonna look at that bar and be like, I, I can get that all day. I don't even need rest and I can get that. And so that's kind of like, that was really eye-opening to me when I worked with Andy, is that you have that, that ability to now go and get stuff because, uh, because you have capacity. And a lot of his lifters too, um, in, in weightlifting oftentimes you can get bumped. So like, if you miss or something, the guy can just hop over the top of you to make you go again. And so you either have to bump up and he can go again, like that. Um, <clears throat> his lifters can follow themselves. They'll miss, they'll get bumped, and they'll be like, I don't care, I'll go again. I'll clean again, I just missed the jerk, it was just off. Because they're fit, they're literally fitter. Than, than the other lifters, so they don't bump them. Um, and so that's another factor that you can work on. Like I think as well, uh, we did it three times, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And then we were actually fucked around with it. It was so much easier. Yeah, yeah. I did 90, you said. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's a good example. We, we have been messing around with this Dom and I, and we actually, we did mess around, like, um, I started at 120 with Andy, and that was a week ago, and then yesterday I did 130 for 5x5. Five five. And I just added a little bit of rest. And that's huge for me. And that's well over 80%. So even though I felt pretty crappy, I was still able to hit 150. And like I'll tell you guys, last year 150 was like, I'm going to be like this all the time, right? And I may or may not hit that. So one thing, like this base load, so this is called base, Load, super compensation, and then performance. Okay, when we start on week five, what percentage do you think relative do we want to start? Relative to your new max or? Relative intensity, it doesn't matter. It's always relative. Like, the actual intensity is going to change because your one rep max is going to go up, but it doesn't really matter. We're only looking at this number. So we're going to progress relative intensity. Where do we want to go? 94? 94? No. Right, go back down. Go back down. Right? And what you can, what you should do is, yeah, 87 probably, because now you're, you're going to be lower than week two, your loading phase, and you're just going to, right, so we, we end up looking like this. Here's our intensity. You're updating your max, might even more like 80. See what I'm saying? That's mesocycle one, so four weeks, four weeks, four weeks. Connect it like that. Uh, and then obviously there would be that little one right here, right guys? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you guys kind of get what I'm saying. Like you, you don't want to do another loading phase after your performance because you, you don't want to load. You don't want to go up because now you're adding in a loading phase. If I go up here, I'm literally loading. Like like this is loading. I'm going higher on intensity. I'm going more reps. I'm actually going to end up doing that if I go to 94 percent. And then you know week six we're supposed to load. So now we're doing two weeks of loading in a row. So you just have to bring that down. I would say start week five, 87% relative, and then go up to 90, and then go down, and then go to 93, 94, right? So then the next block, you're closing that gap. You could do fives for 12 weeks like that. I would be very interested to see how that would work out. I can't remember if you said this or not, but how many times a week is that? Okay, so that's week? the question. This is just to understand how to base, load, super compensate, and so on and so forth. It's like, do you find, like, have you come across athletes who kind of consistently deviate from that red max percentage thing? You know, like they always do uh, three, seven, you know? At, they, just, they just go off their own thing? No, I mean, like, they don't, they can't hit. When they hit like whatever weight for a double, that doesn't mean they can do the... Oh, 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 when it comes time to? Yeah, yeah. So this is the thing. And it's like, not just we're a not, top, it's like Yeah, a, we're not back squatters, we're not front squatters. Yeah. I don't really care about your being able to unwrap and be like, and do a one rep max accurately. Mm. I care about increasing your clean and jerk performance and your snatch performance. What you'll notice is if you do this correctly, you'll end up repping out your old one rep max. So in that sense, we've already won. Yeah, you don't even need to do that. I don't really care about the one rep max. It's nice, because we're gonna end up doing a one rep max, but you don't perform at, at exit. Like, I did this, um, my, my PR was like, 
185, and then I did, I did something like this, and then I ended up doing 190 for two. And then when it came down to actually trying something big, uh, I only did like 192 or something. But I had already surpassed my one rep max and done it for two. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Anyone, somebody have a question over here? Yeah. It's kind of related to that. And I don't know if, do you, do you see difference in the genders with that kind of projection, projection thing? Because I say we did, yeah. we were on this kind of side, the one I was talking about there. So when we got to the test week there, I, where projection was what, maybe nine? I hit 15. Yeah. But then I can't hit the weights, then start failing in the next three weeks. So months. there, yeah. It also depends on how much you've actually been maximally trained. So like, for you, how accurate was your maximum? Would you say it was like, like you knew you were going to improve? Like you knew that like a couple weeks of squatting in, you're going to get So the thing is, when it comes down to testing, Right, we're now taking an MRAP set off of something that you know that you're going to blow out of the water because you're improving so much. Like, um, there, is a, there are plenty of studies that say that women can do a lot more volume at like 80% than men can. There's a lot of science behind that. Um, yeah, so, so uh, that's for sure true. But if you go from squatting one time a week to now squatting three times a week, you have to know that when you AMRAP the next time, at week three or four, or whatever you do it, that you're gonna blow it out of the water, regardless of how accurate you think your maximum was. We are now squatting three times a week than we used to squat once a week. Yeah. So that's obviously over a long period, is it? Week one, two, three, four. Yeah, so like after, see the way if you, went, if you jump from 100 kilo to say 104. Yeah. Would you, like over the course of a year, would you you'd at least then you'd, hold, you'd want to go for around 40, 50 kilo in the squat? From the very beginning to after 12 months. So, what's your question? Is is so? Would you project with that program that you should be able to at least go up with 40 or 50 kilo over a year? Yeah. Oof, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of stuff could happen, yeah. and you can't just we we can't just keep going like this mm. for a year, for two years, like just never coming down. Like, there's got to be a break. Oh, yeah, there's got to be. Yeah, obviously stuff. But at the beginning, like you know. Yeah, I mean, in, in the long term, like after a 12 week cycle, you're going to be putting on some serious kilos. And then after that, take a break off. I mean, because you're a different person. Like, literally, like, you, you really are. If you go from squatting once a week to three times a week and progressing like this for 12 weeks, you might put on 20 to 40 kilos on your back squat or front squat or whatever it is. And then at that point, like, don't expect to go 20 or 30 kilos more. Uh, your one rep max is now very accurate. So now work on other things, take a kilo, all that stuff. But that's neither here nor there. That's a lot of. More theory, yeah. When well, this is like linear kind of game based stuff, like because obviously exactly that's what yeah, that, well, you can't keep putting off. Yeah, no, that's so what I'm talking about. Um, there's a, there's three different phases: uh, preparatory, competition, and then um, transitional. And the transitional phase is literally a downward phase. Like you have to come back knowing, like <clears throat> they actually call it loss of trainability. In like in Soviet test, tests, it's like the translation is like loss of ability. Like that is an important step. Is like losing the strength that you have. Physically have to be physically have to just just nothing. Like um, you know, I would be shocked. I bet you Lasha could could snatch two hundred right now. I think I bet he could. That's just me. This is totally random. I have no idea. But like I doubt that he's in shape to do what he's been doing. Especially because he went world's slight little devo and then Europeans and he tried to hit world records on both of them. And now it's you know, he's all over Instagram, like doing Smith machine squats and and stuff like that. And and so right now he's losing his trainability and that's absolutely purposeful. That's where linear periodization absolutely stops. I think twelve weeks for a beginner. Is a is definitely a long enough time frame if you're put in the work to, to add a lot of kilos. After 12 weeks, you can kind of reassess, but you can't keep going forever. There has to be elements. sort of two different. Looking at that, it looks like you should just go up or behind, but a lot of people don't really get that. You get the stage where a set of five is a skill set, 
and a single is a totally different squat than on a back squat. Yeah. But you're just building capacity through that. Yeah. Right? It doesn't. But that's why the transfer isn't clean. Then it transfer isn't clean. It has to be means and end. I think that five, like skill set, but I think it's building mental capacity. Again, if you can do five by five at eighty percent and front squat, you know that when you're cleaning that, like, that is nothing to you. Yeah. Um, and if you're taking, if you have to really consider that and unwrap and take a big breath at eighty percent, well, then now you, that clean is going to be a little bit harder for you. Okay, it's a mental edge entirely. So, um, what you can do is you can literally do this three times a week, three times a week, three times a week. Three times a week. But that's going to be boring. There's so many different options. If you decide to squat three times a week, you can do day one, day three, and day five. Okay? And you can do back squat at this percent, or you can do front squat at this percent. And then the next day, you can do back or front at that percent. So are we talking only three days a week, like overall? Yeah, yeah. Really like accessory work so this is just week one, this is just percentage. And if you want to squat three times, you would just do 74, 74, 74. You know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yeah. 74, 74. And then again, you would do it again. And then you would do, but that would get kind of boring or whatever. So what we can do is two days at this, and then we could add in a tempo day. Uh, we can change up the reps. You know, we can go 85% relative at other numbers. So if we did 85% relative at 93%, or at, at, and we wanted to do threes, right? If, if say Wednesday we wanted to do sets of three on the back squat, all we would do is take um, what we, you know, we took what 87, we multiplied 85 times 87. All we would do is multiply 85 times 93, and now we get the same exact relative intensity, but the weight's going to be higher. So let's let's do that really quick. Um, so I'm doing 0.85 times 0.93, so that's 80%. So if we're doing threes, where we were, you know, our actual intensity from, our 85% relative was 74, our actual intensity now for doing threes is, is going to be 80. So that's how relative intensity works. The guy who does 80%, he's doing triples for 80%, he's doing the same amount of work or similar to the guy who's doing 74% for fives. That's really like the, the, the point of relative intensity right there. The most important thing to understand when programming is that you should have a base phase, a loading phase, a super compensation phase, and then a performance phase. The terminology can be different to what you've heard. You could have heard uh, load, overload, deload, and uh, max out. Well, those are very similar concepts.